so that's
Oh, they didn't bring you. No, not yet. It'll be here eventually. And welcome in, everybody, to the David S. Palmer Arena. Nate Williamson here with Dennis Michelson. We're here for another round of Danville Dashers hockey down at the Palm, as we've so affectionately taken to calling it, against the Port Huron Prowlers, the second game of a home-and-home -home this weekend. And, Dennis, the Dashers fell 4-0 last night in Port Huron. What have you figured out are the keys to them coming into tonight? Well, Coach said that they need to work a little harder. I uh, was very disappointed with the effort he got from the team from start to finish last night up in Port Huron. I asked him if there was any positives he could bring out of that game, and he said, nope, not really. The other big problem that the Danville Dashers have is it's getting incredibly crowded up in the skybox. The list of players that are hurt continues to expand and Tanner Hildebrandt will be the next missing in action tonight for this game and the Dashers will only be skating with 15 skaters to go with their two goaltenders so about three shy of uh, what you usually face here in a uh, federal prospect hockey league game. And the games between these two teams are never going to be an easy matchup. Long-standing rivals, at least between the cities of Danville and Port Huron in terms of hockey here in the FPHL, the FHL, the CHL, other things like that. And especially when you're down a couple of players, maybe scratch that, not a couple of players, you're down a starting line worth of players. You got about a six-pack of people up in that press box now and a couple of the injuries, you know, I'm not so sure we're going to see these players back in the in the near future here. So it could be uh, some trouble here getting our uh, Danville Dashers, uh, some of the starters in. And one of the big problems that I see, Nate, is a lot of the, the guys that are missing are on that defensive line. So it's getting pretty tough because you need to have good, solid play at the point both uh, when you're at regular strength and, uh, of course, on the, the power plays to get a lot of offense generated. And uh, when you've got most of your starting defensemen out, that's not a good sign. Yeah, that's for sure. You're missing key guys. Our Artem Stupnikov, who's yet to make his debut here with the Dashers, having a little bit of trouble getting into the States with injuries and other things like that, as well as missing a few huge pieces, and literally one huge piece, as you mentioned, Tanner Hildebrandt a big disruptive forward, kind of middle player actually at that point who had a heck of a performance here the other night when we were back here last. And that was a really well played game by Danville against Battle Creek where he made a big impact. Now that impact is gonna fall on the shoulders of newer guys. We were talking earlier off the air about Nigel Slade, guys like Artem Efimov Barakov who we saw come into this season. Logan Hoggood gonna have to step up on defense and play some key shifts when you're missing guys like Casey Dion, Ben Bukal, of course Brad Denny, one of the lone starters that's left from the beginning of the season. It's always gonna be an uphill battle. Yeah, having Alex Palmerville and, and Seth Ensor there on the defensive line as starters tonight, that gives you good anchor. Brad Denny's really solid, of course, but boy, we miss some of those big starters on that defensive line. Yeah, you absolutely do. As I think we're gonna get a break here and introduce the Dashers starting lineup. And shaping to be a good crowd tonight here, led, of course, in the starting lineups by Mr. Tommy Barnes, Tommy B, local radio personality. And joining me right now, another local radio personality, Mr. Dennis Michelson and myself, Nate Williamson. And we're gonna have a good time tonight. It looks like it's gonna be shaping up to be a very nice crowd here on a Salute to Veterans Night, one of those things. It's gonna be a great time. Very rowdy crowd as well. They've been at it for a while now. And I, I think we're going to see a lot of enthusiasm out of our, uh, our Dashers faithful here tonight. And with less home games on the season, you, these fans have been waiting and waiting to have a moment to step up. And they're going to need to be loud tonight if they want to throw this red hot port here on team off in any way, shape, or form. And of course, the starting lineup for the Dashers, another key player here, Alex Palmerville, coming in at number 11. Number 19, Fred Hine is not starting tonight. However, we do see Jesse Gordachuk once again in net. 
Christers Bormanis, number 61, starting at the forward spot. Pairing up with Palmerville on defense is Seth Enser and Jesse Nayer at the forward spot. No doubt that uh, Jesse Gordachuk has taken over as the number one goaltender on this team. And I think you're gonna see him uh, carrying the load quite a bit here going forward. Yeah, I definitely think you're right. And starting in the net opposite him on the ice is gonna be Mr. Chris Paulin, his goalie out of Lockport, New York on the port here on team. So far in the season, he's got three wins, four losses in 11 games. It's a goal against average, not looking too hot. 4.3 goals per game, and not looking too great. He's also got two penalty minutes for what it's worth. I don't really throw those out there for the goalie very much, but let in 30 goals in 11 games played. And now to sing our national anthem, please welcome Mr. Kurt Kaiser. Hockey at the David S. Palmer Arena. We're here against the Port Huron Prowlers. That was the national anthem of the United States of America, sung by Mr. Kurt Kaiser. Those were your colors. A special presentation tonight where we're honoring veterans here at the David S. Palmer Arena. And you know, Dennis, something funny about Kurt. We've been friends for quite some time now, and you should have seen pictures of him when he was younger. He looked like he could have been the lead singer of Styx. <laughs> he has got such a great voice, and the crowd here at the David S. Palmer Arena really gets fired up when he sings the national anthem. It's quite a nice tradition to have here at Dasher's Games. It is, they love him, and he is often, and almost always, the man singing that national anthem. Thank you, Ron, and thank you for your service. There's a puck drop. We want to thank all veterans for their service and all their family members for the support and their service in a different way of their own. Tonight, a very fitting night as we honor those who have given us so much over the years, and we hope this will be a great game in honor of that. And one interesting note heading into this game, Dennis, how do you like that for a segue? The Port Huron Prowlers electing to start Chris Pollan instead of Corey Simon. Simon so far on the year for a little bit of background. Five games played, a 1.33 goals against average, wow. and a 96.2% save percentage. Well, we're kind of happy to have the edge in the net then because uh, Jesse Gordachuk's stats have been just simply incredible uh, to start the year. And I love these uh, home colors for the Dashers tonight. I do too, and that was often almost an early chance there for Dalton Jay as a big hit laid into the boards there by Seth Enser, and the Dashers are on the break here. Bormanis with a shot, and that is almost gloved out of the air there by Chris Pollan. Fought four along the boards here. It's gonna be Port Huron's Dalton Jay that ends up with it, and we have an early stoppage of play. 
Little shenanigans going on well behind the play. Seth Enser and Jonathan Giuliano got tangled up down in the offensive end for uh, Port Huron and kind of leaned on each other and stayed on each other through most of that whole play. Well, sometimes you just got to get down and icy, right? I mean, that's just the nature of things. In the face-off circle now, it's Bormanis taking it against Jay. And Port Huron looks to take some offensive opportunity here. That one's flicked across. It's going to get as far as the right winger here. It's going to be turned over to the Dashers. Trying to flip that one long there was the Dashers' defense. Now coming back for that to recover is Seth Enser out there with Alex Palmerville, Fred Hine. That'll be Palmerville throwing it forward. It only gets as far as Bormanis, who tips it up just a little bit farther than where it was, straight to Port Huron. Port Huron coming threateningly into the zone, a fake pass into a fake shot. I don't know if he meant to fake it, but either way, he came up empty. Coming the other way now, the Dashers are going to have a three-on-three -three if they move fast. And trying to swing one around here is Nigel Slade. Slade very active in the Dashers' last game here at home and very active on the road in that shutout loss. Just couldn't put the final pieces together. Out to the point, it's a shot from the point. It's almost redirected in there off the stick of Brad Denny. Good effort there by the Dashers, but came up empty. Justin Portillo coming down the wing now, tries to sling one across. It's cleanly swept out by number 44, Johan Hoagland. We'll see his name a lot tonight, especially with a depleted Dasher defense. That is just unable to be collected there by Jesse Gordichuk. Instead, it's going to come out and find Nigel Slade again. Slade tries to dump it up there for Barakov, but no such luck as the Dashers get a shift change. Lucky not to get caught off guard there at that shift change. Now Port Huron collects in the offensive zone. It's a shot on the right side, a pass behind Ned instead. Tries to find it back into the point across the slot. That one almost touched up there by Port Huron, but Gordichuk and his defense putting in a hard shift right now. Out there on defense, Logan Hoggood, one of the newer acquisitions for the Dashers team. Fighting in it in the corners, A.J. Tesserero and a couple of Port Prowlers. That one's going to be redirected out, and the Dashers are going to have a two-on-two -two and some open ice. Trying to carry it in now is Levi Armstrong. He is strong. He will hold on to these pucks, and as he does there, he's going to try and get rid of this one as soon as possible, though, as he's being hounded. That one goes Marco Luciani out there. We didn't see him last game. Dasher still on it. This is going to be a shot from the left side here, right side of Paulin. And a shot there is saved by Paulin. Quite often in hockey games, the first few chances that a goaltender gets, you can kind of get an idea of how strong they're going to be. Paulin looks a little lost down there in goal, but the Dashers have not been able to cash in yet. Meanwhile, down on the Dashers' side, Jesse Gordachuk, the only chances he's handled been real sure. A quick shift change here as the Dasher starting line is already back out on the ice here. Taking the face off, Bormanis loses it. Ending up on it is Young. Young now carries it across the defensive blue line for the Prowlers. That one's going to find Fultzenowitz. And pressed along the boards here. Fought for a lot of early board pressing going on here. As Fred Hines going to try and get on the other end of this one. He almost does. Instead, he's going to carry it. He's got Bormanis. And Fred Hines shoots, scores! Fred Hines puts the Dashers ahead early on. Great one-timer by Freddie Hines. He got it to some space there and a wide open shot. And as I said, Paulin has looked a little bit lost in the goal, just has not looked sure of himself. And he gets beat to his right side on that one. And Fred Hine, just the guy you want to come out and score early on if you're the Dashers. If he gets hot, there is proverbially no stopping him. Didn't get a body on him. You got to keep a body on him or he's going to have a big, big night. You definitely don't want to give him breakaway, that's for sure. Fast, strong, and with a great shot on his stick. Touching this one up is Hoagland behind the net. Somehow almost loses it in front of the net. No such luck. And now bringing it back is the Dashers. Hoagland going to carry it over. He passes it through there to Nick Gullo. Gullo loses it. Portillo coming the other way now. Portillo's going to carry it in and try and throw one across the point. No one home for Portillo. He's back on it now, and he's throwing some lethal point shots through, but the Dashers are cutting off every passing lane. Now on it is Nick Gullo. Gullo loses it there, and the Port Huron Prowlers are going to have a breakaway here. It's Justin Portillo, but he just can't get to it in order to get himself a goal-scoring opportunity. 
Good job by the Dashers defense of reading that play too. Nick Gullo on it now. Gullo with a shot that almost finds the five hole there. And Paulin's gonna have to clean himself up a little bit, shake his head in the right direction and regroup. Paulin fighting that one off and it wasn't much of a shot. No, on this one's Troy Murray. Murray was carrying it through there. Instead, it's gonna find Gullo again. Gullo carrying it on. And Gullo tripped up, but a clean play. And that was a weird play. Nippert now on it. Nippert fires it across the point. It's a shot off the post as Port Huron almost pulls one back. Coming the other way now, Troy Murray still out there on defense. Throwing it down out of the zone is Marco Luciani. That one's gonna get as far as Jesse Gordachuk, who is, may I say, rocking these jerseys. Can we just make these an alternate jersey? Can we wear these all the time? I like them. No. I like them a lot, but we're gonna be auctioning them off after the game. Might just have to buy a second load, huh? <laughs> Graham coming back down now. Trying to be touched up by the Dashers. Almost got out of the hand and fell as far as Gordachuk. Now coming the other way with it here. Number 11, Alex Palmerville. Palmerville carries on. He's a strong one. He's going to try and find a pass, but the Dashers a little slow to get there. Instead, going to turn it over to Jonathan Giuliano, who throws it down the ice. If the Dashers get there first, it'll be an icing. It is waved off there as it was close enough. Port Huron with a chance there that goes wide behind the net. Fred Hine back out on the ice, and he's going to sling this one down. He's trying to find Bormanis there. Instead, gonna find the Port Huron. Bormanis fighting for this one to keep it in the offensive zone. Almost does so. Instead, this puck's gonna end up with Jay. Jay carries it on, he's up one against two. Gordachuk was all over that one, didn't make it as far as him as it was wide left. Port Huron struggling to collect this puck now. Almost finds Fred Hine, incidentally. Bormanis now passes it back to the defense. Puck was on edge and acting like a Mexican jumping bean. Hoagland with a hard pass there, tipped up by Fred Hine to Bormanis. A nice play there from Fred Hine off of his stick. Bormanis gonna have to fight for this one. It's kept in well by the Dasher defense and we're rewarded for it. In the end, it's gonna be number 26, Nigel Slade that ends up on the other end of it. Slade still has it. Comes off the boards. He does lose that one just a little bit but manages to get it back. Slade over to Denny. Denny tries to find Slade back. Instead, it's going to go back the other way as Port Huron almost ends up with a chance. Instead, Johan Hoagland ends up with the puck. A couple fake passes and a little screen set there as the Dashers recover. Brad Denny going to carry it up. He passes it on into the offensive zone, and it's going to be shot from the right side, almost redirected off the rebound and in. Justin Portillo now carries the other way. Portillo over to... And that's a shot that goes wide left and a little bit high. Jesse Gordachuk doing a great job getting back to that one. Coming the other way is Barakov. Barakov, Barakov is carrying it in, carrying it in. It's a shot, and it's wide right of the net, but a nice carry there by Barakov. Dashers really pouring it on here early and often against Port Huron's backup. That's going to make it all the way back to Jesse Gordachuk as the Dashers regroup and look to go again. Coach was very unhappy with the effort he got from the guys last night up at Pier Port Huron, and he's got to be much happier today. A big accidental hit laid there by Troy Murray, but that one's going to hurt his arm as well. Not what you like to see from one of your better defensemen, them having to come off the ice there without a shift change. Arm a little bit hurt there as he gets checked out by the trainer. We'll see how long it takes him to get back out on the ice. Looks to be okay though as he sits right back down. Trainer seems happy. That's good news for the Dashers. Can't afford another injury here. Already playing a pretty thin lineup. Graham wins that face off for Port Huron. It's almost immediately lost though by Parsons. Port Huron coming the other way with it now. Nippard. And it's fought for along the boards by several players. Bringing it the other way now. It is Marco Luciani who throws it down off the boards. It's going to be recollected by Levi Armstrong who gets it back to Luciani. And it's turned over to Port Huron. It's in the back of the net. No one can see it. The referee had better eyes than all the players there. Yeah, Paulin thought the, that he had, had frozen the puck along the side. He had totally lost spot of where that puck had ended up. Now coming back for a face-off here, a little bit closer to us. Port Huron wins it, drops it back to the defense. That's gonna be a nicely threaded pass there to Robertson. Matt Robertson fires it down there, looking for Nippard. 
A backhanded pass finds no one, but it could have had another offensive opportunity off the end of it. Now coming the other way, Bormanis. Bormanis over to his wing, and it's a shot. It's swallowed up there by Chris Pollen. Saw that shot all the way and made a good fine stop. A lot of energy from the Danville Dashers here early on. 11.42 left in the first period, and it's been about 80% Dashers offensive end of things here so far. A lot of energy in the arena tonight, probably feeding off that. Fred Hine loses this face off, but narrowly as it's a scrum to pick it up. Now on the other end of it is going to be Brad Denny. Trying to thread that one through was Bormanis as that was a nice look, but just couldn't get the puck off his stick. Johan Hoagland gonna carry it through here. I don't think the pass was meant to go to him, but all's well that ends well. As he does not end well, crashing into the boards pretty hard there of his own accord. Bormanis on it now, loses it up. Port Huron gonna have a break. Bringing it down is Dalton Jay. Dalton Jay gonna carry it on, throws it to the point. It bounces off the skate of his winger into Gordachuk. Now Danville coming the other way. Bormanis on it now as Bormanis is going to pyre to Hine. Hine tries to throw a pass across the slot. Almost redirected in off of Pollen's back, but no. Good idea there. Jay on the breakaway. Jay versus Gordachuk. Jay tries to poke it through Gordachuk, and Gordachuk equal to the task as that puck, no one had any idea where it went. I just sprawled out on the ice and got a stick on it. Whatever body part you can use to stop the puck, that's the goalie code. Fighting for this one is number 77, Barakov. Coming now, Bormanis. Bormanis carries it across the blue line. Active today early on. Nigel Slade with it. He's going to throw it behind. There's a down stick back there. I can't see whose it is. Looks like it's a broken stick. Now carrying Slade with a nice backhanded wrister that finds the glove of Pollen. When you have a goaltender that's been a little looking like he's unsteady, why not keep shooting? Good effort there by the Dashers again to put that puck on the net. On the faceoff, Nigel Slade. For Port Huron, it's going to be Matt Graham. This will be a matchup you'll see a lot tonight. Both guys taking close to a third of their team's faceoffs. On it now is Danville. That was a way too hard of a pass there off the foot off the stick of Alex Palmerville. Oh, and Danville almost off the post there. Palmerville's gonna fire this one in. It skips, oh. luckily, just wide of Pollen, who didn't see it coming at all. He was totally beat on that shot. Armstrong fighting for it along the boards there. Oh, a nice self-effort there, Nick Gullo. Dasher's winning every little scrum along the board so far. Portillo bringing it down now, it's Graham. Graham over across, a heck of a defensive play there by Gordachuk. I don't know if he got a piece on it, but it wouldn't have mattered. If he had, it would have been a no goal either way. Coming across now, Barakov passes it off to Slade. Slade's got a man open to his right if he wants it. Instead, he elects to shoot. It comes off the right pad of Pollen. It's thrown back behind the boards now. It might not get as far as Brad Denny on defensive wing for the Dashers. Uh, Denny tries to poke it out there. Port Huron quick to this one. It's off the skate of Denny for what seems like the sixth time. Port Huron going to run now. And that one's off the skate of Nippard. It's not a soccer cleat. You're not going to get a good touch off that. <laughs> Trying to fight for this one. Number nine, Marco Luciani. As that one's just going to be tipped back down into the Danville defensive zone. Now coming the other way with it is Danville. Now the good crisp pass. Levi Armstrong on the end of it as Levi's put into the boards. I don't think he minds that too much. Oh, almost going to find out. Instead, it's going to be Port Huron coming this way. Jay is open. Yeah. Jay's got a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a shot and a heck of a oh, save. Jesse Gordachuk. Big time stop by Jesse. Jesse Gordachuk with a beauty. Now dumping it. It likes to get a shift change is Danville. Puck kind of lost around the boards there. It's a miracle. No one got caught with too many men on. Coming on here, Logan Hoggood. Hoggood flicks it off there to Brad Denny. Brad Denny going to find Jesse Nair. Bormanis carries it in. Nair going to might get on the other end of that one. No such luck. That one's going to be tipped back down by Port Huron's defense off the boards. A lot of good end-to-end -end action here. 
Oh, almost a really bad pass there from Troy Murray, who's coming back after being shaken up a little bit earlier on. Bormanis tries to get a man, but he can't get around two. Now coming the other way is Danville. A little bit more clustered here in the middle as both teams try and get the advantage in the mid ice. Now coming the other way with it is Troy Murray. Murray on the back end of it as that's slung up to Bormanis. It's gonna get as far as Bormanis here. Jesse Nayer coming in on net. Nayer just out of his reach, almost gets a shot off. It's left of the net. Great effort there, that puck was bouncing but he made a good effort to stay with it and get a shot on the net. Port Huron almost gets a chance here. An errant pass is gonna let them have a little touch up and a shift change. On the other end of this one's Barakov. He's gonna get pressed into the boards here by Joe Pace, but it manages to evade a hit. Ready to swing it to the point. It's a point shot from the Dashers, but coming back and having to regroup is Palmerville. Gordachuk actually getting on the other end of that one. A beauty of a pass there from Gordachuk. You like those guys that can work out from the back. Nigel Slade was on the other end of it, but he's pressed off the puck. Matt Robertson. Robertson almost found himself the beneficiary of a slot pass there from Jay. Jay Graham Robertson working really well together so far tonight. Speaking of Robertson, he's on the puck now. A backwards pass there. Finds Graham a nicely threaded pass there. His pucks just are attracted to skates, it seems like. Heads up. That one's into the stands. And a souvenir. I thought we were going to get active on that uh, deflected puck. You never seen me play goalie before. <laughs> Granted, I've never played ice hockey goalie before. That sounds terrifying. We're going to get our first media time out here. I think this game has flown by. Game has flown by. Only 6.18 left here in the first period. The Dashers have been taking this game to Port Huron offensively. One adjustment that I was very happy to see here by the Dashers. They were giving up way too many uh, odd men breaks there. They made a good adjustment that time. The last time uh, we saw a shot from the point by Brad Denny, Alex Palmerville kind of rotated out and in, in, uh, leaving the zone just in case that shot was blocked and it was. So good to see the defensemen working tight together to keep those odd men breaks from happening. Something we didn't see in the very first part of the game tonight. Absolutely, and like you said, Danville doing a good job of taking it right to Port Huron from the start. Currently out shooting the Prowlers, 11 shots to four. You know, you think Port Huron probably had a plethora of good opportunities as well, even with just four shots being official on the scoreboard. A couple of bad hits off a skate, a couple of inch, inch errant passes, and you've got a whole different game here, and that's just the nature of it. They've had about three or four other chances where they didn't even come close to hitting the net. But that big stop by Gordachuk on the breakaway, that's what's kept the Dashers up by one. And it was a big stop indeed there from Gordachuk. And that's a slapper right on Gordachuk, and he carries that one probably with his armpit. A nice save there from Jesse. Again, a really good look at that shot from the point. It was a wicked shot, but he saw it all the way into his body. Port Huron pulling it on now. That one's gonna get as far as the Dashers. Port Huron still threatening a pass across the slot. There's another one of those just slightly bouncy passes we were talking about. Finally able to get onto it is Danville as they get it out of the zone, but not for long. Robertson touching it up now. And it's passed through to Graham. Palmerville on the other end of this one as he's gonna carry it around net. Eventually gonna get it is Barakov. Barakov's pass just a little bit off. Coming the other way is Nair. Nair tries to fire a shot there, maybe just to buy a little bit of time. This ends up splitting the defense though fairly well as the Dashers get a shift change. Coming the other way now is Port Huron. Nippert out there, Robertson across the point. Instead, it's a shot on net from the left wing. Coming down now, number nine, Marco Luciani. Robertson on it in the middle of the ice. Robertson passes to Jay. Jay's got a chance here as he shoots on. It's a nice save from Gordachuk. Danville has a chance here if they move fast. Coming the other way with it, Luciani. And we're gonna have a stoppage here. 
I think it's a hooking. Now logic dictates that one's gonna be on Port Huron. Good job down in the dashers end by Levi Armstrong of picking up the, the rebound that came off of uh, the shot from Part Huron and quickly turning it back up the ice for another Danville Dashers chance. They didn't get the goal, but they did draw the penalty. Now coming back on the end of it, it's gonna be Matt Stoya that actually takes the penalty on that one. It is a hooking, like we said. And Port Huron gonna have uh, 155 left to kill right now. 458 left in the first period. A very fast moving first period here in Danville. Danville looking to get this one in the offensive zone. A nice skate pass there. Don't think it was it, or on purpose. Fred Hine ends up with it. Fred Hine on it now, also out there for Manis. And that shot's actually just gonna be redirected, gonna go all the way down to Gordichuk. Yeah, if you're trying to kill time, you don't want to pass it right to the goalie. But when you're in that situation, you do whatever you can to get it out of your ice. Danville going to come the other way. Port here on intercept a pass. It's Graham on it. Robertson's down there with him. Instead, it's going to be surrendered the correct way down the ice towards Jesse Gordichuk. Touching it up is Palmerville. Palmerville throws it over there. Ending up with it is Bormanis. Bormanis carries it in. He's carrying it past the defender coming into the corner. Fires it across the point just a little bit off from Fred Hine. Instead, it's a Brad Denny slap shot that only gets as far as Port Huron's defense. Robertson coming down now. He's got Graham off to his left. Robertson elects to keep it. Shoots. It's up over the net and up over Jesse Gordachuk, who almost loses his footing. Now coming on the other end of it's Bormanis. Denny going to collect it behind the net and elect to get some fresh legs out on the ice. And I think rightfully so, a minute and 20 into your, pen, or into your power play, nothing going for that line. It's time for a line change. They just have not gotten much out of this power play so far at all. Nigel Slade with a nice pass, but takes the brunt of it. That one's going to come back for a tripping. Yep. Nice. He's going to go through the box. He'll, he'll feel shame. He'll sit there for two minutes by himself, and he'll feel shame. I think that is Levi Armstrong. No, it's Brad Denny. Yeah, that puck kind of was bouncing around out by the point. Brad Denny was a little bit worried about the uh, Port Huron player getting a get an offensive chance shorthanded and took him down. Well, and that means we'll have 23 seconds of four on four, followed by the remainder of that two minute penalty for Port Huron. That was an interesting send off there on Nigel Slade. First send off of the night on a face off. And Port Huron's gonna win it here in the early goings of the four on four. Parsons out there. That's gonna be thrown behind there to Austin Federley. Austin Federley, a dynamic scorer. We saw a lot of him last season and the Dashers last season didn't like seeing a lot of him, that's for sure. Hoagland back to Palmerville. Palmerville elects to chip it down the ice there in the direction of Paulin, who thought it should have been an icing here during the four on four. Now we're at a, a serve pro penalty kill for the Dashers for a minute and 23. Hoagland gonna do a great job there at stopping that one. It gets to Palmerville. It's sent all the way down the ice there towards Port Huron's bench. Hand pass. I didn't see it, but I'll believe it. Yeah, the Port Huron player had actually caught the puck in midair that the Dashers are trying to, uh, to clear out, and he kind of uh, juggled it and passed it to himself. Sometimes he can get away with that. He did not. No, he certainly did not this time. And he's going to the box, actually. Interesting, okay. So we're gonna be back to four on four hockey here and then we'll have 45 seconds of Dasher penalty, penalty or power play, excuse me. I was taking off our serve pro penalty kill there because it's no longer one. This has been the most confusing stretch in a minute I've had. 2.44 left in the first period. They'll give you a little break at uh, between periods. Yeah, Bormanis loses the face off there in the early goings of our second four on four hockey of the night. Palmerville gonna carry this one out. Watch him stretch those legs. Long legs, a good ability to get down ice. Bormanis finds Palmerville. We're gonna have an offside. offside. Tried one more extra move to uh, get past the, the Port Huron defense. But as he did so, 
his fellow dasher forward got a little offside. And the faceoff here, it's Graham going up against Slade. Slade wins it, or at least deflects it down the ice there towards the Dashers. Paulin going to touch this one up behind his own net. Slade putting some good pressure on there. The Dashers really going down ice here as Matt Robertson's down at the other end. Bormanis on it now. Actually, that is going to be Jesse Nayer on it now. Also out there, Logan Hoggood. And a nicely done pass there. Tries to get it across. It's going to find Troy Murray, who's offside. Minute 57 left in the first. 28 seconds left before uh, the Dashers will go on a, uh, another power play. And this face off, Nick Gullo for Danville going up against Zachary Zolkanitz. So far tonight, Port Huron winning the battle of the faceoffs. Carrying it across now, gonna have a shot, why not? We've got 16 seconds left to four on four before we get a little bit of Dasher serve or Jenna Worth power play. Bring it down Barakup. Barakup gonna have some open ice. He's gonna carry it behind net. No wraparound attempt here. That one is gonna be redirected out of play. Trying to find a slot pass and ends up finding a stick and then a seat. Six seconds left on our four on four before the Dashers will go on a quick power play here. And not sure what the hold up was there, but we got a little bit of an explanation. There's still Canitz against Hine here. Hine back in the center circle for Danville and loses it. A little bit of a neutral win, neutral loss there, I would say. Now back on defense, Danville. Palmerville elects to look around, take inventory. Now coming the other way is Christopher Bormanis. Bormanis is going to try and play it back there, at least to Slade. Slade gets it around to Palmerville. To Hine, back to almost there, almost tripped up as well, was Seth Enser, who was in the center position there for half a minute. 104 left to go in the period. 19 seconds left on the Dasher power play. Fred Hine coming up. They'll have numbers if they move fast. Hine with a shot, and it's wide right. That one's going to find its way all the way back. I think to Brad Denny, who's going to pick it up here in the Dasher's defensive zone. Six seconds left on the power play. 48 seconds left in the first period. Now on it's Nigel Slade. Slade carries it through. Slade working very well with Christers Bormanis. Fred Hine almost finds the back of the net. Instead, Pollen with a nice pass out. That is eventually going to find Port Huron on an, a one-man advantage. It's a three on two. With a shot there as that's deflected off the right arm of Jesse Gordichuk and up into the netting. Good opportunity for Port Huron, but again, Gordy up to the task. Tough between the pipes tonight. And that was Nippert and Stoya there with a nice little bit of passing to get on in. They're going to have a shift change here. Robertson in, Graham in. Dashers need to start winning some of these faceoffs. Tessarero coming up now. Denny fighting for it in the corner with Robertson at all, as that one's just gonna be covered up by Gordichuk. 18 seconds left now in your first period. A very fast first period if I do say so. Tessarero back on it here with Graham. Graham wins it, finds Robertson who fires a shot there. It's gonna be redirected on the way up into the netting. Probably would have had a chance to go top corner there. Gordachuk looked like he was in position, but didn't make it that far. Tessarero gonna come off for the Dashers. Instead in the center circle, Nigel Slade. 15.4 seconds left here in the first period. As that one's won by Port Huron, a shot from the point goes wide left of the net of Jesse Gordachuk. Slade does a nice job of getting that one out, and Danville can have an advantage if they move fast. Bormanis on the puck now to his left is Nair. Bormanis carries it in, and we're going to get an offside call. I do believe that makes three offensive possessions in a row where Dasher has just got too excited. Jumped a little offside. 1.2 seconds left in the period. Barring something strange, I don't think that's gonna be quite enough for us to see another goal here. I think we're gonna stay at one to zero. We're gonna 
have another stoppage here. And as a punishment, the referee is going to have to go get the puck. Yeah, the puck ended up in the corner, and everybody's just kind of standing around. It's kind of like when you call a timeout in backyard baseball, football, <laughs> basketball. They said, fine, but you have to go get the ball. <laughs> That one is going to end 1-0 to zero here at the end of the first period in Danville. Dennis, early thoughts. Dashers came out with a lot of energy tonight. They're getting beat on the faceoffs, but other than that, they're winning the rest of the game here tonight. Jesse Gordachuk has looked solid in net as he has in every game we have seen him here at home this year. And that difference has been Fred Hine with that rocket of a shot. Early on, it looked like the Port Huron goaltender was a little bit shaky in the net, but he certainly settled down in the late going. And the penalty we saw earlier where we weren't exactly sure, we thought it was a hand pass, was for too many men. Just as a quick update from the box here. Danville currently leading the shooting, 12 to eight here after the end of the first period. Power plays, 0 for 1 Port Huron, 0 for 2 Danville. Both sides with two minutes of penalty time. As we see the players make their way off the ice, we always wonder what is gonna be going on during this intermission because I've been here two years and I still can't keep track of what we do during intermissions, let me tell you. Always some exciting stuff going on for the fans, though, that's for sure. And, of course, you know, after the second period, we get our favorite chuck -a puck So uh, it would be interesting to see who's shooting tonight. I have a feeling they're going to be uh, shooting for prizes. I'm assuming, no matter who it is, that I think it'll be veterans out there taking the shot tonight. I'm assuming. He's got it figured out. Give him a pair of skates. He's using combat boots and skating around out there. <laughs> I'm impressed. I can barely do that in my shoes. Well, just once again, we want to take a second here before we go to our little break to thank all the veterans out there, their families, and as well as all the people who help support them from VA staff members like my mother to just about everybody, family members, my cousins, and uh, you know, we just want to take a second and remember all those that have given their lives and given parts of their lives. Some gave all, all gave some here tonight at Veterans, kind of just a salute to Veterans. I don't remember the official title of the night, but I don't think you really need a title for something like this. My brother was career Air Force, and even in peace times, it takes a lot of dedication, and it takes a lot of sacrifice from missing out events with the family to be there to protect your, your country. Absolutely. And we only get to do the fun stuff that we get to do because of the veterans that keep us safe on a daily basis. There is no doubt about that. So if you're out there, you're watching, you're a veteran, you know a veteran, well, thank you, or remember to thank the veteran that you know. We're going to take a short break here from the David S. Palmer Arena. We'll leave the camera on so you don't miss any of the halftime fun, but we'll be back for Dennis Michelson. I'm Nate Williamson. See you in a bit.
Okay. Let's see how this works. And we're back here at the David S. Palmer Arena. I'm sorry, I won't ever do that again. 32 seconds left here until we see the players make their way back out onto the ice. Joined by Dennis Michelson, Mr. D. Mike. What are going to be the keys for the Dashers heading into the second period if they want to hold this 1-0 lead? They got to keep up the momentum. You know, as we've always talked, first three minutes of each period seems to set the tone for the entire period. They need to come out strong. And of course, in that second period, you're farther away from your bench. So the big key will end up being making those shift changes at the right times. Absolutely. Chris Paulin led in an early goal to Fred Hine. But since then, he's done a really good job back there in the net for Port Huron. It's Port Huron a little bit maybe unlucky to score or to not score yet in this game, you think? Well, I don't know if it's uh, a lack of luck or having Jesse Gordachuk in between those pipes. He's made a few really fine stops again. But Port Huron, they've won so many of the face-offs, but the Dashers defense did a good job of keeping them from having too many clean looks at the net. And the ones that they did get, Jesse Gordachuk has been fantastic as he has been at all of our home games this year. Yeah, he has, and he's been a force for this Danville team. Struggled at times, but really is solidly setting himself as the best goalie on this team. As we've talked about a lot, the first chances he has stopped a high percentage of those. A lot of the goals that he's given up this year have been on the uh, rebounds, and that's where you need some help from your defense. Danville gonna have to be tidy on the rebound and tidy in front of the net here as they only have a one goal advantage here heading into the second period. And again, Danville Dashers under man tonight. And it'll be interesting to see if that starts being a, a problem for the team as those old legs get a little tired as we get deeper into this game. And the longer you wait before the start of this second period, the more comfortable the guys can get on the fresh ice, that's for sure. <laughs> Tearing it up nicely. If a Zamboni could talk, you wonder what its feelings would be. You're just ruining my life's work. <laughs> Especially when they take that ice away when the season's not going on. <laughs> While we're waiting for the face-off, got a couple of special guests here from WorkSource, Dustin and Chris Cole. Brothers who are big, big, big Dashers fans are here at the arena tonight enjoying this game, I'm sure. A really good crowd here tonight on the Salute to Veterans Night with the Danville Dashers here at the David S. Palmer Arena, downtown Danville, Illinois. A long road trip here for both teams, actually, after last night's occasion in which the Port Huron Prowlers shut out the Dashers. Not going to happen tonight. At the very least, the Dashers have one goal. I understand there was a bit of carpooling that went on to get the uh, team up to, to Port Huron uh, for last night's game. Buses not prone or not unprone to having some difficulties so far this season for the Dashers and just about every team in the FHLs. We get an early icing there off the faceoff, which was won by Port Huron. Our, uh, one of my favorite Twitter feeds, Bus League Hockey, not only does a good job of keeping me up to date with all the action from the minor leagues of hockey, but also a pretty good recap of all the uh, travel troubles that the teams might have. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have somebody on top of that. Almost redirected in on net there by the Dashers. That one's kept in the zone nicely there by Seth Enser. Fighting for it there was Bormanis. Also out there, Jesse Nair, Fred Hine, and Alex Palmerville. A nice stick away there from Palmerville. That one almost on, redirected there. It doesn't get as far as Jesse Gordachuk. It's going to make its way out almost to Fred Hine. Trying to touch this one up comes Bormanis. Bormanis is stick tangled up as he shoots one up off the side of the netting there of Pollen. Now Bormanis on it again. Bormanis lays it off. It's a shot on net there 
as two dashers hit the deck together, colliding there as Enser has a shot on net. Now coming the other way is Port Huron. Good thing you can't call a tripping penalty on your own team. Oh! And you're gonna get a tripping penalty now on Port Huron. Gonna go to the box is Jonathan Giuliano who thought he had the raw end of the deal with a Seth Ensor hit. Well, even if you have the raw end of the deal, you cannot trip someone with your stick and he'll go to the sin bin and feel maybe a little bit of shame, maybe a little bit of happiness. Depends on if they score off of it or not. So we'll have two minutes of penalty time here for the Danville Dashers on the Genoworth power play. That was about as obvious of a penalty as you're gonna get. I'm blind as a bat, and even I saw that. Looking to take the face off here, Nigel Slade, for Huron yet to send a representative. However, it is gonna be the assistant captain there. I do believe taking it would be, actually I can't even see. Man, the side numbers on these jerseys, not fun for commentators. Let me tell you, you think I would've learned my lesson last year. <laughs> on it now, Palmerville. Palmerville passes in, it's fired across the slot there, having a shot was Christers Bormanis, but no one home there as Pollen does a nice job at getting a control of it. Fred Hine on the other side now. Hine gonna have a shot, almost goes top right there. Kept in nicely by Palmerville. Palmerville back across, Hine open on the side. A Hine shot is saved by Pollen. Good effort on that shift by Fred Hine. Got two good opportunities. Bormanis on it now. Slade across from him. It's gonna be shot on almost by Hine. He stumbled a little bit on the end of that one. Hoagland on the point. Hoagland over to Seth Enser. Comes back around to Fred Hine. Hine finds Enser. Enser open ice with a little bit of a shot. A almost evades. Could be another Pollen. Oh, I'm surprised there wasn't another penalty there. Fred Hine finds some open ice, shoots it, swallowed up in the midst of bodies there. Eventually, you would think going to cover this one up as he does. Chris Pollen, a little bit of extracurriculars in front of the net there. No one punished. 46 seconds left here as Danville was threatening on the power play against Port Huron. Pollen looked a little unsure of himself on that whole exchange, and Danville almost cashed in. And stepping up to take the face off here on the power play, 45 seconds left. On the other end of it was Brian Parsons. Hoagland passes it across the point to Denny. Denny stuck in traffic there as Jonathan, er, Dalton Jay does a great job there. Denny over to Hoagland. Hoagland to Denny. Denny with a shot from the point. It's not gonna get very far though as the Prowlers Swallowed up to a nice job at cutting off any line from the point to the net as they're gonna get a shift change here. And Danville elects to stay out there. Out there, Tessarero prowling the red line. 15 seconds left in the penalty. Uh... And gonna kill the majority of that time is that being sent down the ice there. Denny gonna end up with it in the long run. Denny elects to take time and let this power play expire. 17 minutes left to go in the second period here in Danville. Holding the puck, get a shift change here, smart move. Denny out there with Armstrong. Denny ends up finding Tessarero. A shot on net off the stick of Luciani, doesn't go anywhere. A two outfielder pop fly there as it's almost fought for. Instead, Port Huron coming down the ice here. Austin Federley has a shot that's gonna be redirected off the pad of Gordichuk, up into the netting. Yeah, that one went up so high, I think Artie was calling for a fair catch. Both sides getting a shift change here. We're actually going to bring it back out to a neutral zone faceoff. Puck frozen there for a moment. Robertson going to have a slap shot right up into the glove of Jesse Gordachuk. Saw it the whole way. Saw it the whole way and very, very sure on that glove stop. <laughs> Neither side really asserting themselves all that much here in the early going of the second period. Graham wins that face off against Luciani. Dashers almost have a breakaway opportunity. Instead it's a shot on net and scored. 
Robertson, Matt Robertson fires one home to level the game here at one. That puck just sort of hopped around, found his stick. He was wide open right down the center of the ice there and fired it home. Gordachuk had no traffic in front of the net, but just could not stop that blast. Couldn't get on the other end of it there as Robertson levels the score. 16-22 left to go here in the second period of action. The old game of inches, that puck almost uh, ended up on the stick for the Dashers for a breakaway and then uh, quickly the tides turn. Hine tries to keep that one in, instead elects to go back to his defense there. It's Seth Enser out there with Alex Bomberville. That pairing changed up a little bit here as we've gone into the game. Up around the boards there, it's gonna get all the way back to Enser. Enser over to Palmerville, to Hine. And off the stick of Hine, almost kept in the offensive zone there, instead gonna run with it as Enser. Enser tips it down, takes the price into the boards there, and coming the other way is Port Huron. Portillo federally on it now. Federally gonna have a shot, it's blocked up with almost a chest by Jesse Gordachuk. That one's blocked away with the pads as Federally recovers the rebound. Dash is doing a lousy job here, and there was a high stick that put that puck into the net. That one's gonna be easily waved off, and Portillo gonna be smiling and laughing that one off. Uh, no goal there on the high stick, and you kinda saw that one coming, honestly. Yeah, that puck was just kind of hanging up in the air. If he would have waited for that puck to come down below waist level, he would have had a good chance to, to get that past Gordachuk, but instead chose to play the high volley, knifed it into the net, but uh, that is against the rules. A tough play there. It's hard to be patient enough to let those come down, isn't it? Now on it's Hogland. Hoglin tries to pass it forward to Barakov. Nothing going there as his stick is tied up heavily. Yeah, we're gonna have a penalty on Port Huron. Coming the other way now, Danville. Danville gonna have a shot on this one. It's passed off by Paulin and touched up by Port Huron as we're gonna see a penalty. That was another very obvious penalty. The stick got kind of stuck up in the armpit of the Port Huron player. He might have gotten away with that, but then he grabbed onto the shaft and held on for dear life. Yeah, and sometimes that just happens. You try and do it just a little bit, but it ends up being a little bit too much and you end up in the sin bin. And yeah. again, right in front of the referee, so there was no way he was gonna get away with that one. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to get away with that, that's for sure. Shots now 19 to 11. Danville still out shooting Port Huron as they go here on the power play with 15-15 left to go in the second period. Palmerville with a shot from the point, trying to redirect it was Danville. That one's kept all the way down. Dalton Jay gonna try and make play for this one. Jesse Gordachuk on top of it though. Gordachuk out of his net, almost turned over to Port Huron. They're gonna have a three on two if they move fast here. Bormanis on it. Bormanis throws it across to the point. Fred Hine puts it up and a nice save there by Chris Paulin. Great pass by Seth, Seth Ensor from the point. Just kind of threaded it through the defense. Found the stick of Hine and he almost Got that one buried. The Hine will bury those more often than not. Just got caught in a little bit of an awkward situation there. Paulin with a heck of a job being ready. 134 left in the power play for your dashers. Fred Hine on top of it now. Hine fires a shot and that was a wrist rocket. Almost finds Bormanis with the rebound. Instead, Port Huron gonna touch it up. He's gonna have to let that right one go outside. as it'll be an offside. Coming back now, it goes to Danville anyway. So well done there to lay off of it. Coming down now, that was Seth Ensor. Ensor fires it across there to Palmerville. Palmerville loses it. Now coming the other way is Robertson. Robertson already got one goal scored on the night. Robertson, a one-on-one, -on -one, a shot! And it's saved out by Jesse Gordachuk. A heck of a one-on-one -on -one save there. Got out, closed the angles, and Danville goes the other way. Beautiful oh, job by Nice Jordan. backhanded pass there by Fred Hine. And this one's gonna get all the way around. It's gonna be touched up by Danville, kept in the offensive zone with 51 seconds left to go. Now Port Huron on it. Here on out, Robertson's gonna have another attempt here. Robertson with a shot. Gordachuk saw that one all the way, says nope. And in the end, almost stripped of the puck as he tries to play it out. Now coming the other way, Bormanis. Bormanis slings it across Fred Hine. Hine with a touch-up pass, and Paulin oh. sprawls out desperately and stops it. Thought he had him beat that time. Almost did, as Gordachuk almost stops another near goal from Robertson, and then almost immediately down at the other end, the Dashers almost score one. Now the Dashers stuck in their own zone with 16 seconds left. 
Robertson federally playing hard for this one. Federally waiting out there in the middle, trying to get any kind of outlet pass. Seven seconds left on the power play. Nothing going to be called there as he was going hard, and that sometimes happens. Coming down the other way was Nair. Now coming the other way, Brad Denny on the defensive side. Denny gets hit by Stoya, but actually just hits Stoya onto the ground. Brad Denny, a hard man to take down. Now coming the other way with it is Port Huron playing with some pep in their step now. In a tie game with 13 minutes left in the second period. And this one's going to probably come down here for an icing as Port Huron going to collect that one and we'll bring it down to the other end of the ice as Danville will have a face off in their defensive zone. 12.53 left here in the second period. Dasher started that power play really strong and then got sloppy up at the point. Port Huron getting a couple of breakaway chances while trying to kill off a penalty and the Dashers lucky that Gordachuk could come up strong and keep this one tied at one apiece. Denny fighting for it here against Port Huron. As Port Huron almost has a nice chance there back to seal it up his pace as Danville tries to counter. Gonna get on the other end of this is Hoagland. Dash is starting to get beat to every one of these loose pucks. And you wonder when those dead legs are gonna come into effect here, Dasher's playing with a shortened bench as tripped up behind the net is Brad Denny. No call on his Port Huron's gonna get another one here in the offensive zone. Hoagland on top of it. And then tries to send it out, no such luck there. That one almost finds its way into Gordachuk as he's gonna freeze it. Puck taking all kinds of weird bounces. Gordachuk does well to slide over and cup it. Dangerous, dangerous play there, right out in front of the net. And Gordachuk looked like he was trying to swat fireflies to, to fight that one off and managed to get just enough of the puck to keep it out of his net. Now face off here. It's going to be federally taking it for Port Huron. That one's going to be frozen up. We'll have a redo from the back judge. Intriguing. Now coming up here federally against Hine in the face off circle. A fight in the center for that one as Hine ends up getting it back to his teammate. A big hit laid there on Logan Hoggood. Dashers continue to be a little sloppy with the puck in their own end. Poor man, it's going to end up almost on the other end of that one with an opportunity. Instead, it's played as far as Port Huron's defense as Portillo lays chase to this one. Danville tries to regroup. Throwing it down now. Danville coming into the offensive zone. We're going to have a delayed penalty here on Danville. Federley brings it in. Federley's going to have a shot seen all the way by Gordachuk, but unable to corral it as we're going to continue with this delayed penalty. Or not. Must have just been a delayed offside. Coming back now, Palmerville. Palmerville yeah, behind. Confused too. Back in. As Danville threatening. Now Port Huron threatening. Going the other way. It's Federley. And Portillo over it. As his point man comes up. Danville able to do rid of that one. Tessarero coming now to his left. has got a man. It's a two on one. Tessarero almost oh. finds the pass threaded through there to Seth Ensor. As so Ensor close. just a few inches off of the top of that one. Danville had a fair share of opportunities. Now on it, Barakov. Barakov turns it over to Portillo. As Barakov wins it back from Portillo. A nice pass there to Tessarero. Danville has numbers. Tessarero with a shot that's sticked away by Chris Pollan up into the net. Another good chance. Great shift there by A.J. Tessarero. Getting a couple of really good chances generated for the Danville Dashers. 10.33 left to go here in the second period. A 1-1 score on the board. Barakov on this one. Barakov with a nice spinorama, tries to throw it in there. Nothing doing though. A hard hit though, keeps the puck in play. Barakov throwing hits left and right. This one's gonna come as far as Hoagland who fires a long way out there, all the way into the netting. That one's gonna come all the way back to the neutral zone. A 
I do believe Zach Zolkanitz was saying that should be delay of game, but it is a shot and it was tipped up. So not quite how that works, but you might as well plead your case, right? Not sure what he's complaining about. Doesn't seem thrilled, that's one thing. Zolkanitz had a couple of really good games last year against Danville, worth mentioning. I just don't think he liked Toglin uh, cranking up a shot with him between the shot and the goal, maybe. Who blames him? <laughs> <laughs> Poor man is the nair. That one tipped up nicely there. Port Huron gonna lay chase. On it is Jay. Danville does just enough there. That's Hoglin that pushes it out as Jay pushes him into the boards. On it now, Nair. Nair elects to skate this one out. Oh. There's it behind Brad Denny there. Not the pass you were looking for. Dasher's pass is just a little bit off and it's giving uh, Port Huron some unexpected chances deep in the Dasher end. Port Huron gonna have plenty of time to work this one out. On it now, Zolkanitz. Zolkanitz, Jay. Jay with a wrister backhanded. Swallowed up by Jesse Gordachuk. That looked like trouble was brewing again for the Dashers, but Jesse Gordachuk again up to the task. And while we're in the media timeout, we want to remind you coming up December 7th, our annual Teddy Bear Toss. That's always a really fun time right now. That noise you hear in the background, one of the loudest you'll hear tonight. Dash is giving away a pizza and the kids are swarming him. <laughs> and sometimes it works. That kind of sounded like me when I get pizza. More when I'm eating it than when I'm winning it. Yeah, I get pretty excited when there's pizza around. Maybe we can get Dash to bring us some pizza. Yeah, that must be on our new request. We're gonna have to file that one away. We did plead last year for someone to bring us Red Lobster, Cheddar Bay Biscuit Roll, or whatever they are from Red Lobster all the time last year. That was our running plea. Not a bad one. Like I was saying, December 7th, our annual teddy bear toss. Diane Short, GM, says, let's break some records. Bring a stuffed animal and throw it on the ice after the Dashers score their first goal. Stay after the game and skate on that same ice with the Dashers. That's always a lot of fun. Dennis, you going to skate around for a little while? I would need my uh, double-bladed runner skates. I can, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> a man has to have his specialties. I, however, will need the simulated walker that is used out on the ice. I played hockey, but yeah, I still need a walker to skate. It was really embarrassing by the time I got to high school. <laughs> Dashers win that face off now. It's gonna be all back behind the net with Troy Murray. Murray tries to feed that one else. Fighting for it there is Bormanis. Bormanis gonna have a shot on Paul and Bormanis did nice just to get to that one, to not let it be icing, much less get a shot on net. And he does. He's made a heck of an impact since he started here just a few short two weeks ago when he came to the Dashers team, and this only his second homestand. With all the injuries that the Dashers have had, without these new additions like Slade and, and Barmanis, they'd be in a world of hurt. They would indeed. A shot on there is going to find Paulin, but no such luck as Hine is just being tied up by Federley behind the net. That's one way to stop him, that's for sure. Unless he finds it in front of the net again like he just did. Hein on it now, Federley face guarding him. That's a smart strategy there by Port Huron. Now all of a sudden the Dashers getting the best on the offensive end here. Bormanis tries to plug it through there to Troy Murray, no luck. And Port Huron coming the other way. Good Ellis. job by the Dashers defense. Active sticks in the passing lane to break that one up. And they're gonna have an advantage, a three on two if they move fast. Coming across is Bormanis. Bormanis with a shot on, doesn't test him at all. Paul in there in net. Bormanis gonna somehow find his way onto the rebound of this one, almost threads it through to Slade. Instead we have chaos in front of the net as a loose puck is being tracked down there. Eventually won by Port Huron, trying to throw up the glass, but instead stopped and only makes it as far as the Danville player who keeps it on the side there. And Port Huron gonna have numbers here if they run fast. Instead, the speedy Jesse Nair comes back to even the numbers out as Port Huron elects to dump this one for a shift change, a heads up play there by Jesse Nair. 
a nicely threaded pass there if that had been off by an inch. Would have been taken the other way for an offensive opportunity off the stick of Alex Bomberville. Instead, gets all the way back to Pollen, and we have a freeze. That was a heck of a bank job off the sideboards all the way down to the goaltender. That's pretty good play of, uh, of the old uh, angles. I bet he's pretty good with a pool cue as well. A shot from Brad Denny there from the point. Port here on going to have a break here through Robertson. Robertson is in on net. Robertson with a shot. It doesn't find the net. It's sticked away by Jesse Gordichuk. Tessarero fighting for this one along the boards now as Danville looks to counter. Levi Armstrong going to be running for this one. Just hops to the other side of the net from him as he lays a big hit there behind the action. Brad Denny sticks that one away to Tessarero. Tessarero put against the boards and the bench in a tough way. Coming against it now and Marco Luciani Instead, Port Huron picks it up. A rocket of a shot off the stick of Shepard. And Gordachuk went down like a deer that just got shot, but hangs on to that one. That was a wicked shot that caught him in the midsection. And he went down and made sure he did not give up a cheap rebound on that one. Well, the Dasher's given up some easy plays to Port Huron, but doing a good job of recovering so far. But they keep that up. It won't be long until Port Huron puts one behind Gordachuk and gets the advantage here. Could have a face-off here. Hine versus Zolkanitz in the Dasher defensive zone. 7.06 left here in the second period. That one's going to make its way all the way back to Gordachuk, who sticks it out. Not able to keep it in is Port Huron. Now laying chase there is Jesse Nair. Nair tries to chase it down, and that's going to come off the stick of the Prowlers. Come down for an, or an icing. Six minutes, 50 seconds left here in the second period in Danville. Coming into the face-off circle now, that same matchup. So Kenneth and Hine. As we've got a little bit of a delay here. Coming in now, Port Huron wins it. Jonathan Giuliano coming down the side here. He's got space, elects to pass it off instead. Giuliano on it now with a shot. It's swallowed up by Gordachuk, a rebound. Fought for by Dashers and swallowed up by Gordachuk in the end. Dangerous, dangerous play there, that first shot. Caught Gordachuk a little bit by surprise. It came so fast. Made a good solid save. And then big scrap for the puck in front of the net. And Port Huron getting a good chance. But Gordachuk again coming up big between those pipes. Another face off ensuing here. One by Port Huron. Let's talk back to Arnott. A little bit of extracurricular here. Coming down the other way are the Dashers, trying to thread it through to Bormanis. Nayer unable to connect the pass. Instead, a tough pass is going to find Nayer. Nayer got a little bit of space. He's got one man on it. Able to get it back to Slade. Slade unable to poke that one out and go free. Now Port Huron going to come the other way with it. And a shot on goal is well high there in uh, Jesse Gordachuk would have had that covered either way. Rocket off the stick. Just sometimes rockets go too high. Yeah, that rocket looked like one of those North Korean lock rocket launches way off target. Now coming on the other end of it here, taking the face off for Port Huron, Matt Graham. Graham loses out to Tessarero, and the Dashers are going to have some ice to work with. Bringing it down ice now, Levi Armstrong. Armstrong carries across the blue line, brings it into the corner, looking to pick out a pass as easily finds his way through. Kept in by Palmerville. Palmerville to Ensor, a shot on. Levi Armstrong yeah. trying to put this one back, but instead it's fought off by Paulin. Good job by Ensor putting that one on goal. 
giving Danville a chance for that cheap rebound in front of the net. He had a lot of traffic there, and that's what you like to do, put it on net, see what happens in the ensuing chaos. Going to be thrown almost all the way down the ice here by Port Huron. A huge hit laid Dang there it. on no one almost as both players seemingly just skated onto the glass chasing the puck. Probably a good thing too. That would have been a bone rattler. Strack with a shot from the point. Doesn't make it any further than Levi who loses track of the puck. Armstrong pokes it the other way though. A eventual recovery as Tessarero finds it now. Tessarero carries it into the offensive zone. Tries to thread a pass through, almost does. It's barely sticked away Ooh. by Paulin. Palmerville on the other end of this one. A nice pass there to Tessarero, whose stick is tied up, and he goes to the ice. Back out on the ice, Christers Bormanis, Jesse Nayer. Couple of, couple of dashers bouncing up each other, kind of giving Port Huron a chance here. We've also got a delayed penalty coming against Danville. A shot from the point here. It's going to be redirected almost in. Gordachuk well up to the task, though. That one's going to be cleaned up by Danville, and we're going to have two minutes of a minor penalty on Danville. Danville really looked out of sorts there. Two of their own players ran into each other, leaving Port Huron with a good chance. And then behind the scenes there, Alex Palmerville taking the penalty. With the way Port Huron's been getting the best of the faceoffs and getting the base, best of the battle along the boards here late in the second quarter or period, I'm a little bit worried about this uh, power play coming up. Federally wins that one for Port Huron. A shot from the point there is wide right of the goal. Now that one's swallowed up by Gordachuk. We're gonna see if he gets a freeze on it. He does indeed. As we're going to have another face off here. 4.18 left to go in the second period. 1.51 left to go in the Port Huron penalty. A serve pro penalty kill. When Gordy saw that shot going way wide, he got ready to play that carom off the boards, knowing where that puck was going to end up. And he did a really good job of anticipating where that puck would end up. Port Huron threatening now. Dasher's crowd starting to get into this one. They're gonna need some noise. Throw off Port Huron here on the penalty kill. Oh, a tough, almost redirected into the net. Gordachuk barely gets to that one. Austin Federley with a couple of big hits on the glass here on the side. Port Huron fighting for it. Justin Portillo being allowed to camp right in front of Gordachuk. And you gotta get somebody in there that can deal with that. Unfortunately, your biggest defender is in the box, Alex Palmerville. Tanner Hildebrand out for the game. Someone else that could deal with that. Justin Brazen also out with injury. We're running out of options. Wonder if Portillo can uh, make an arrangement to get some uh, Chicago style hot dogs sent up to us here. Seems to be a theme with me being hungry tonight. I am starving. I have not eaten today, so I feel that. Coming to the face-off circle now in more relevant news. <laughs> One of those delicious giant pretzels might be in our future at uh, the end of the period. You are not joking. Matt Graham loses that one out as the Dashers have a chance here to shoot this one down the ice. As we have a minute and 11 seconds left on the power play for Port Huron. Penalty kill for Danville. Three minutes, 34 left to go in the second period. Carried across patiently here by Arnott. Not a great pass there, as that one's just going to let Danville throw it right back down the ice. Laying chase was Bormanis. Bormanis able to tie Good this one hustle. up around the corner. That's a hustle play, and that's hustle points right there. Fred Hine laying chase now to try to do much of the same. Bormanis and Hine pushing up front in hopes to shut this one down before it can get going. Doing a good job of killing about 10 seconds at a penalty there just by being annoying. Active sticks, and we're gonna have a break here for Port Huron. A shot that just goes wide right of Gordachuk as he was covering the narrow gap there on that shot. He had Matt Graham streaking up the left-hand side and just barely missed him with that, uh, that pass. Harnett with a shot that's deflected by Danville. Now gonna have a break here, just too far the pass from Fred Hine. Out to Bormanis, but instead a frozen puck, and the Dashers win an offensive zone faceoff here with nine seconds left to go on the serve pro penalty kill. 
Again, good hustle on the play by Barmanis. Forced the uh, Port Huron netminder to, to take the face off here, giving Danville a chance to have fresh legs as they kill off the last nine seconds of this penalty. Coming back now, Port Huron losing this face off actually in the long run. On the other end of it now, Nigel Slade. Slade plays it through there to Nair. Back to Nair back strength. through to Slade, almost gets it through. 2.24 left to go, and Port Huron's gonna have a break. A shot on net and wide and high there. As Danville gonna have an opportunity, that puck came right up here to us. Oh, missed the glove save. Souvenir for the man in the very nice Illinois hockey jersey. I highly approve of that. Oh, and he's going to give it to a kid. That's awesome. That's what it's all about, folks. As that one comes all the way up here, that's probably the closest puck we've had in the last two seasons, honestly, from what I can remember. Uh, I should have had the glove save. If there would have been one that close last season, it would have hit me in the head while I was sitting there running the social media. <laughs> Dasher's threatening here with 2.05 left to go. Trying to get on the end of that one with Barakov. Barakov and Tessarero, the offensive duo out there, as well as number nine, Marco Luciani. A big hit there laid on the left side. Now Giuliano's on it. Giuliano loses out there. That one's going to be passed through by Barakov, who gets pushed into the boards but keeps a hold of the puck. Barakov spins around. He's got some open space. A little bit too strong for Hoagland. Hoagland with a shot. And that is going to be blocked up before it even gets to the net. This one has just been lost. Tessarero eventually finds it. Tessarero looking for a pass. He finds one. Luciani to Baraka. Baraka tripped play. up and almost scores. Very nice stick work there from Chris Paulin. Great job again by A.J. Tessarero getting a, a good offensive chance for the Dashers. And now a delayed offside on Port Huron with 117 left to go here in the second. Coming around with it. We're going to have a face off after that offsides. Just got a little bit jumpy there with some weird bounce passing. Did come across the blue line, but barely. Palmerville's going to bring that one down and only gets it as far as Nair. Oh, Fred Hine almost ended up on that one. Borman is going to have the chance to run this one down against Joe Pace. Love the hustle we're seeing out of Bormanis again tonight. A fire lit for sure. Almost gets picked out by a pass there. Fred Hine fighting ferociously with Joe Pace for that one. Two gamers, they love the game and they go hard at it. Oh, a shot there from Bormanis, almost finds its way through. Instead, Palmerville ends up with it. Nayer's gonna try and fight to get back on the end of this one. Instead, Port Huron coming the other way. A shot on the goal there, didn't get as far as the goal. The second shot does though from Giuliano and the Dasher's gonna run wide open here in the final minute. On it now, Bormanis, Hine to his right. Bormanis carries it in, a shot on Paulin who saves it nicely with a left pad and freezes. We're gonna have a face off. Good job there and a great shift by Bormanis. He was uh, just a one man offensive uh, juggernaut there. Generating chances. Dashers didn't start out this second period all that strong, but they sure are finishing strong. 30.9 seconds left to go here as we await the second intermission, one to one here. A great game so far tonight by both sides. Lots of offensive chances, just not a lot of capitalization. Dashers had revenge on their mind after losing four nothing up at Port Huron last night. Then you knew it was gonna be a close game. The second game of the weekend, a shot there. Almost comes off Luciani's stick and gets through. It doesn't get, it gets blocked up beforehand as we're gonna get a new puck from the officials box from their magic puck creator that we can only assume they have in there. Especially with how many pucks we've lost tonight. A shot off from the point there for Danville. Danville threatening here, 22 seconds left to go in the second period. That one's gonna make its all, all the way back out to the point. Thrown on, almost sticked up by Port Huron's defense. And with a chance there, ended up being Levi Armstrong. Danville still threatening a pass across the slot, almost finds a stick. If it found any stick at all, it would have been in the back of the net as Paulin did not have that covered. 
And after all that buildup, we're still going into the second intermission at one to one. Great awareness by Alex Palmerville there, knowing the time was almost up. He knew if the puck was given up to Port Huron, they wouldn't have time to make a dash. So he came all the way deep into the offensive end trying to push the advantage. But the dashers could not capitalize, but a strong finish to the second period by the Danville Dashers. And that'll basically do it here. Second period, one to one the score in Danville between the Port Huron Prowlers and the Danville Dashers. 28 shots on goal, now 26 for Port Huron. 28, like I said, for Danville. And scoring wise, obviously one to one power plays. Danville 0 for four, Port Huron 0 for two. Six penalty minutes to Port Huron, four for the Dashers and no, notably so, a couple different periods of four on four action that's led to a lot of fun offensive opportunities. And a lot of uh, very hard hitting behind the play by both teams at the end of that uh, second period. And the, the referee's doing a really good job of making sure that Danville was completely off into their locker room before letting Port Huron Club leave the ice. I think the referees did a good job there of trying to uh, avoid having any shenanigans as they headed off the ice for the second period. Yeah, without a doubt, two teams with a lot of history, both as franchises and with a lot of players with a lot of history, both good and bad. A couple former players from the Dashers here on the Sport Huron team, and a couple players that have been with the Port Huron Prowlers, a couple of players that are just now getting their first experiences, let's say, in one of the FPHL's many rivalries. There are a lot of storylines, especially blooming in this season where we're seeing so many fresh faces, and boy, what a refreshment that's been. We have seen really, really good play in the Federal Prospects Hockey League this year. And I love having access to watching all these games from around the league. You learn a lot about teams before we see them here at home. And I've been really impressed with the level of play up and down the rosters in all of these teams so far early this year. Yeah, it's definitely been impressive, uh, especially considering some of the franchises built so quickly in the offseason. It's been really, really interesting to watch them grow, and it'll be interesting to see how that continues into the next week. Well, we'll be back here in just a little bit for the third period of this game, currently sitting one-to-one -one Port Huron against Danville here at the David S. Palmer Arena. About 16 or 17 minutes, and so we'll get back out on the ice and finish this game up unless we head to overtime, which wouldn't mark it out and also wouldn't hate to see it. Going to be a lot of fun. So make sure to stay tuned here on the Danville Dashers Broadcast Network. Remember, catch all the FPHL games on YouTube. Make sure to hit that subscribe button.
Welcome back here to the Danville Dashers Broadcast Network. Nate Williamson here with Dennis Michelson on the call. We're headed to the third period here in about 34 seconds. A one-to-one -one game all tied up here in Danville. About the only game still ongoing in the FPHL. I do believe we have final scores out of most, if not all, of the others. We'll get a look at those in just a second. But first, Dennis, I want to ask you what your thoughts are coming into the third period. Both teams out of deadlock here. Both teams plenty capable of scoring. What are your thoughts? Second period was very interesting because it sort of looked like everything kind of uh, changed back and forth as far as the momentum. Danville started the period sort of in total command, but just couldn't get the puck in the net. And then all of a sudden, towards the end of that second period, Port Huron had the advantage. And I think the Dashers were kind of lucky that they didn't end up getting scored on. But at the very end of the period, all of a sudden the Dashers took charge again. So it'll be interesting to see how well the legs hold out on the Danville Dashers here in the third period. Yeah, no doubt. Around the league tonight, a lot, every team in action, a full slate. Menor taking on the Columbus River Dragons. Six to three, Menor wins on the road. And Battle Creek put up two goals against Carolina, who scarcely give up goals in general, but fell eight to two down there in Carolina. They've had a tough stretch, four games in a row and six games basically this week. Dash, or Danbury, excuse me, the other Dan team, 5-2 to two over Elmira in Elmira. Watertown winning at home as well, 4-1. to one. That is currently going on, actually, excuse me, still in the third period. They started a little bit late at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, and we're headed to the third period hockey in Danville. Bormanis on the end of this one on an early faceoff win there for Danville, who are going to look to come out strong. Palmerville circling back on a fresh sheet of ice to get to this one. Port Huron applying pressure very early on here. That one's tripped up and they almost benefit as a result. Federally creating a little bit of chaos, a very fast skater. Eventually that finds Jesse Nayer who carries in. Nayer a little bit of work with a Bormanis shot just going left of the goal there of Chris Pollard. Port Huron with a near opportunity. Instead, it's going to come out to Seth Ensor. Ensor is going to fire a shot that goes all the way around the boards, even a little bit too far. Is going to come back and be touched up by Brad Denny, who came out on the ice. Denny fires a shot up the ice to the offense, and a shot there finds nobody. We're going to have not only a goal coming off the post, but a goalie on the ground. And no fault there of the Dashers player as Port Huron's 72 there, Zaxel Kanitz. Kind of threw his own guy under the bus there a little bit. And that's why there's not going to be a penalty. Yeah, one of the Dashers players got tripped up and just kind of slid along the ice, taking the uh, legs out from the Port Huron netminder and also the net off the, uh, the moorings. But uh, just glad nobody got hurt in mm -hmm. that exchange. That's always such a big danger. Goalies can't really do a whole lot to defend themselves, especially from skates coming at them like that. One by Danville, a shot from the point there. Firing it on, almost the rebound put into the net here. Instead, Gullo's gonna try and chase this down as Port Huron turned over there. A backhanded shot evades the glove of Paulin, but not into the net. Slade passes this one out to Gullo. Gullo loses it though. Jay coming up the right-hand side here, waiting to pass. That one thrown all the way down the ice. Jay fast enough to get on the other end of it. He's gonna try and pass this one out to Giuliano. Ends up throwing it down to Zolkanitz. Zolkanitz tries to find Jay. Instead, the Dasher defense shuts that one down. A puck that almost makes its way through there. Instead, it's going to come out with Barakov. Barakov carries it through. He's going to try and dump it down for the speedster, Gullo. Gullo thrown off of it. Instead, it's going to come back to Denny. Denny to Gullo. Gullo behind the net. A nice spin move. Tries to shove it in there. Oh, good pull. And he's tripped up in front of the net. He's down hard on the ice. He might have lost a tooth on that one. Jay coming up now on the other side. Jay carries over. Jay with a shot. That's a nice sliding stop there from Logan Hoggood. A nice defensive play. Carried behind the net now, Port Huron. Fighting for it. Instead, going to come up with it is Tessarero. Tessarero is going to bring it up the middle to his left. He's got Luciano. Not able to find him, though, as that one's turned over to Port Huron. Now on it is Seth Ensor. Enser tries to find Tessarero. Pass picked off there 
by Graham. Graham dumps it down and a lot of turnovers here in the early going as that one almost comes back to Danville. A point across the blue zone. Robertson unable to get on the other end of it. Comes back to Port here on anyway. Graham waiting in the middle, awaiting a pass. Instead, it's sticked up there. Danville closes the passing lane. Now coming the other way with it was Tessarero instead. Going to come back all the way down to Logan Hoggood. Hoggood flips that one up all the way down to the other end of the ice. It's going to come back for an icing. Very dangerous exchange there down in deep in the Danville Dashers end. Seemed like every little bounce of the puck was coming and uh, helping out with, uh, with the Dashers. Now going to have a face off here to the left of Mr. Jesse Gordichuk. Lining up Zolkanitz and Tessarero. And Tessarero loses out on that one to Zolkanitz. It's Jay gets it. A shot goes wide left of the goal there. Dasher's going to try. That's a big hit there. But Dasher's going to have a chance here. Tessarero with a nice deke to get through two defenders. It's going to be a stoppage of play here on something. We'll get an official rule. We're going to have an elbowing and a lot of extracurriculars there. We might see more than one penalty come out of this one. And a good job behind the play by Bormanis, grabbing the sleeve of his fellow player, Levi Armstrong, to keep him from getting into a retaliatory penalty there and saving a power play for the Danville Dashers. And those little things will go unnoticed, but not to coach Ray Tremblay, that's for sure. You're going to have to have a solid team here in the FPHL through a lot of adversity. And now you're going to have a power play, and you've got to want to capitalize on this. With 16.55 left to go here in the third period, I would say the game, but it's definitely could be that we'll see some extra time here. We'll see. Another great uh, play by A.J. Drawing, uh, ending up uh, leading to the play that drew that penalty again. Now we're going to go on to the Jenna Worth power play here as that's Palmerville firing one in as blocked up by Pollen. Bormanis on it now. Bormanis finds a little bit of space, throws one trying to get from the point in. Instead, it's going to come back out to Palmerville off the stick of port here on. Jenna Worth power play here. That one is accidentally touched up. I don't even think Joe Pace was looking at that one. Shot down the ice, though, after he sees it. Gordachuk going to collect this one. Dalton Jay also coming for it. I don't think Palmerville, Palmerville does see him. He's looking better than I am. A spin move to get out of that one. And the Dashers are going. Fred Hine now with a nice deke. Oh, he has his man looking everywhere but at the puck. Fred Hine thrown face first into the boards there. Gets up safely. That's good to see. Those can cause concussions. Hine in front of the net. Hine with a shot. A goal! Fred Hine! From the point with some words for Graham who put him into the board just a few seconds ago. Fred Hine has the Dashers ahead. Great job by Fred Hine of taking that big hit along the boards. And instead of retaliating with his fists, he retaliated with his stick, putting the, the puck past the Port Huron goaltender into the net and putting the Danville Dashers up 2-1 to one with 16.06 left in regulation. Split the defense, beat Paul in a heck of a shot from the point Fred Hine with two goals on the night for the Danville Dashers. And you know he's looking for that third goal, and he's looking, more importantly, for a win. He's still chirping some words down there to Graham. You might see them go at it a little bit later on, but Hine can't get himself off the ice, not on short staff duty. Great job by Fred Hine again. A little bit of a tangle up there by the Dashers. They're not going to pay for it, though, as Brad Denny ends up with it. Brad Denny, a turnover there in the neutral ice. Denny throws this one down. Borman is going to try and get on the other end of it. Almost was a stick check away from getting a breakaway there. Port Huron threatening again as we have a stoppage. I think that one was just an offside. We'll get an official word here. Looks like it was. Looks like it's going to come back. Fred Hine all season has had a great knack of being able to get himself in a situation where he's got a good open look. And boy, does he have a deadly shot. And coming back now, the Dashers with the puck. That one's tipped up, so it shouldn't go down for an icing. Uh, it does. It wasn't tipped up after all. 
I can almost guarantee you the referee had a better line of sight on that than I did. I thought it was tipped as well, but uh, just uh, shows that down on the ice there, might have just barely missed the stick. Changes a lot of things. Changes a lot of things when you get down there, that's for sure. Ref's doing a really good job of keeping the peace all game long, too, and calling a really good, clean game. They are. They're calling a very good, clean game, and also not a whole lot of penalties in this one. It's wide open hockey. You love to see it as Brad Denny laughs off a hit into the glass there. Federally flops to the ground when the sticks were nowhere near his mouth. He comes up bloody, though, so maybe I just didn't see it. A slash there on Gordachuk. Yeah, now we're getting a little bit chippy behind the scenes on both sides. We're getting very chippy here as the Dashers are going to go on the serve pro penalty kill. It looks like Fred Hine is going to go to the box for something. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he gets two or four out of this I one. I see, I see. Two men going to the box there. Strack oh. for Alexander Strack, the defenseman from Illinois, actually, from oh. Mokena, Illinois, going to the box for Port Huron. That'll that's keep it nice and even. Yeah, that's a nice heads up call there. Yeah, poor Huron uh, players are kind of complaining about this one, thinking they should have gotten a power. And now another body going to the box for the Danville Dashers. So they are going to get their power play after all, I think. We'll get the official ruling on this one in just a minute. It looks like Robertson's going to come over there and get the official word for his team. Fred Hine does not look happy to be in there, but he still gives a fist bump to the kids in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> nice guy, Fred Hine. That's one thing. Heck of a hockey player as well. A lot of great hockey players out on this ice tonight. A lot of guys that love the game as well. What I've been really impressed with the Danville Dashers this year, even when they've had a disappointing game, they take good care of the fans after the game. They definitely do. That's one of the emphasis is this community keeps this team going, and without one, the other would be nothing. And the Dashers on the serve pro penalty kill here, technically, as we're going to see uh, five on four. Dashers looking to kill this one off. Instead, it's to the point here. Robertson on it now. Back to fellow defenseman, and that one's passed around a little bit as they dissect this defense. A shot from the point, almost rebounded into the net as it goes wide to the left of Jesse Gordachuk. That was close. Dashers need to get a little more active here on defense. You gotta move those skates, and speaking of which, they almost are able to clear that one, but no luck there as the shot is thrown behind the ice there, looking to open up some things. A broken stick there on a Port Huron player is gonna be chipped away. Danville gonna have a breakaway here. It's called back oh. for a cross-checking. Oh boy. Danville That's gonna get- an interference call, I believe. Oh yeah, it is, sorry. Saw the wrong signal there yeah. from the wrong judge. I'm not so sure about that one. Boy, that is a tough call in a tough situation there. Well, it, not only is it gonna cost you dearly here playing some five on three now, but it also took away, it negated a great chance it for goes the Dashers. on Nick Gullo, as we're gonna still see one minute and 11 seconds here of five on three, followed by a little bit of four Ooh. on three. Or, yeah, four on three. My math is sometimes really confusing. Gordachuk shrugs this one off. Dasher's got a lot of work to do here. Up two to one in the third period. Robertson from the point here. Back to Robertson, a shot from the point goes wide left. Gordachuk had it covered. Robertson gonna be taking a majority of the point shots here. It would seem the last three coming off of his stick. We might see another one here. Robertson collects it. It's down across the zone. Zolkanitz to Robertson. Robertson to Zolkanitz, or Graham. Robertson, Robertson wow. shoots a slapper down to the right of Gordachuk who was screened. It's a goal for Port Huron and a tie game at two to two. Didn't have a chance on that one. The Dashers triangle defense got way, way too deep to the point that they were taken away from their vision of their goaltender. And it was easy for Port Huron to get the uh, the goal to, to even things up here at two apiece. Well, how important was that Fred Hine goal now? And he's still got a long way, minute 35 here to kill this penalty off. Actually, Fred Hine went for slashing. Nigel Slade high sticking Nick Gullo interference. So there's the final call there from the box as Port Huron still 
on the power play. Tessarero smartly keeps this one going to kill as much time as possible. It's going to be thrown down the ice there by Danville. Tessarero blows a tire, and that allows a little bit of space here as a rebound shot is almost fired into the net there from Jay. Stoya on the point now. A nicely thrown shot there. Port Huron going to have a chance. Fighting for it, Bormanis, he's been very active with his stick tonight and ends up with the puck as a result. He's content to skate this one around a little bit and kill some oh, time. Dangerous. Not a good pass there, though, but dangerous not bit play. for it. Palmerville does a nice job at holding him off. That one is going to come down for an icing. You would think, no, it will not. Palmerville throwing it down the ice now. Trying to fight to get on the other end of it. It's Slade freshly, freshly released from the penalty box. Slade doing a nice job at breaking up. 34 seconds left here on the serve pro penalty kill for Danville. Big momentum switch here if Danville can kill this penalty off. A shot from the corner is nicely saved by Gordachuk with the body, sealing up that corner. He's a big framed dude, and that helps a lot in that situation. Good block by the Dashers player there. That was Slade getting a piece of that one. Nigel Slade once again with a nice block there on the point shot. Danville doing a pretty good job here. We have an offside. And that negates another port here on opportunity as well. Both sides probably not pleased with those calls. Just two tick tocks left on the penalty. 12.32 left in the game. There's a lot of twos up on that board, Dennis. You could almost call them wild. <laughs> almost. And the uh, the two penalties there, uh, the, the, they also happen behind the scenes are now expired and that gives the uh, Fred Hine a chance to get back to his bench, which is uh, Really going to be valuable here. Get him out there for that next shift. He's still jawing with Graham here over on the bench. Yeah, those two seemingly do not like each other. Is Danville going to have an opportunity here? It's going to be Barakov taking it down. Barakov fires a shot, and that one's going to be called back for an offside. Ooh, tough call on the Dashers again, negating a big chance. And because while we did not come up with a strong enough shot to get the goal, the Dashers had a really good chance of getting that rebound. Call it refereeing, call it their head being out of place, but I've seen more offsides tonight than I have the entire season. So either it's a very well called game or the ones before were not very well called, one way or another. Coming across now, Palmerville is going to carry it across as he fires it down to pretty much nobody. He ends up with the Dashers, though, somehow. Good chance here. Baraka fires a shot. It's blocked up by Port Huron, though. A nicely played pass there awaits Jonathan Giuliano. It doesn't get that far though. Instead, it's full. It's Zolkanitz. Danville able to recover here. It ends up in the hands of Seth Ensor. Now Port Huron with it. Fred Hein going to carry this one over. Freddy. Hein with a shot doesn't oh. get very far though. Pushed off of it was AJ Tessarero. Now Port Huron with numbers. A nicely connected pass there almost rewards Graham. Danville able to fight for this one. Hine ends up with it. It's going to pop up almost out of the ice, but no, it came off the glass and came back down. Take a weird, weird bounce, too. Seen that a couple times so far tonight. Fred Hine going to have to fight hard to get on the end of this one. He's got backup, though, on there with him. Levi Armstrong, he's really looking to make his body known, especially later in the game as everybody gets a little bit more tired. He's going to come into importance here. Hoglin looking to get this puck out of danger. Hogland and Denny, an effective duo tonight for Danville. That's going to be flicked all the way up to Fred Hine. Fred Hine's going to have a breakaway. Hine with a shot. Oh, a heck of a save there from Chris Paulin. As Hine gets pushed into the boards late on, another hit there coming off the stick, uh, cross-checking there in the corner. Nobody getting called for anything. No oh, whistles no blown. Ball. Nippard getting chippy there in the corner. After Fred Hine took that shot, two Port Huron players decided to ride him into the boards and just give him a little bit of the this and that. And I, that, that's a situation where I was, I'm a little surprised if Port Huron does not get a penalty out of this. You might see offsetting penalties here, if nothing else, or you might just see none called at all, as that looks to be the case. A dejected Marco Luciani barely throws an attempt to get the puck to the referee. I don't think he's too happy. Now 
the referees do an awfully good job of keeping the peace here in the Federal Prospect Hockey League. But that time, I'm not sure they saw what was going on behind the play. Oh, that one almost dangerously redirected there. Hines shoots one back on net. It's tried to be pushed in there. Coming around, it's gonna find Mr. Christers Bormanis, who's had a heck of a game tonight. Very impactful. I don't think it's a good idea for the opposing team to get Fred Hine angry. He seems to take his anger out on the other team with great pinpoint shots. He almost cashed in again. Bormanis with a good shot from the point. Goes wide. Fred Hine does nicely to touch that up. It's kept on side though. Coming around with it is Jesse Nayer. Nayer around the boards, throws one up, and actually finds Paulin. Good chance for the Dashers. And that one's just unable to be kept in there by Troy Murray. Did the smart thing about dumping it deep though. Gave the chance to get uh, fresh legs on the ice for the Dashers. Poor Manis on it now as the Dashers regroup. That one's picked off, but we're gonna have an offside. Yeah, one of the Port Huron players trailing the scene was a little slow getting back over the blue line. Cost his team a chance there. Nine fifty-eight left here in regulation. We're all tied at two as we take the media break. And my goodness, Nate, this has been a very, very tough third period for both sides. Yeah, it definitely has. It has been a tough fought period, both in terms of performance. It's been a neck and neck game here with a lot of back and forth, but it's also been a tough performance physically as we've seen a couple guys come up bloody, but thankfully remake their way back out onto the ice, ending up being okay in the long run. That's what you like to see, especially in a tight game like this. You never want a key injury or a refereeing decision to make the game go the way you want it. We see it too much in sports here with 9.58 left on the clock. A two to two game here in Danville. Every time Fred Hines been out on the ice, it's been exciting to watch down in the offensive end tonight. As we're here at the media timeout, plenty of time left here for one of these two teams to take the lead and just to see how this game ends up. It's probably the game of the night here across the league. The other games ending up pretty lopsided one way or the other on the majority of things. That was a big penalty kill by the Dashers when they went down on that five on three. They gave up one goal, but they could have given up two easily during that power play. Dashers carrying it around threateningly and here Slade with a backhand, it almost finds the back of the net, but instead it finds the true back of the net, not the side you want to hit. Bringing it now, Port Huron going to have numbers if they move fast, a big hit there, and that one's going to be a penalty going against Seth Ensor on the Dashers. Just an unlucky hit there and fell for that deke full heartedly. Nicely done there to draw the penalty as well. And 18 left in regulation. And this is an opportunity here for Port Huron to take control of the game. The Dashers penalty kill unit has to come up big now. Robertson with it on the point. Throws it into Graham. Graham on it now, tripped up Port Huron by their own players. A Little bit of a circus act there. Maybe part of the plan, as that shot does find Jesse Gordichuk, so maybe not too unjustified in being part of the plan. Brad Denny, Johan Hoagland out there on the defensive side of things for the Dashers on this power play, serve pro penalty kill. Robertson on the point. Robertson with a floppy pass there. It's gonna benefit the Dashers. As Denny didn't have his head up or he would have seen a streaking number 61, Christers Bormanis there. 
That big, big guy. It's got a lot of speed behind him as well. Long strides. One of the newer acquisitions for the Dashers here. Already becoming a fan favorite, I think it's safe to say. Dangerously into the zone now. Port here on a beautiful deke there off the stick of Young. A shot from the point is almost redirected up. Instead, Gordachuk had to see that one go up and played with a high stick. And I also think the net came off its moorings. Yeah, it'd be scary to see where this Danville Dashers club would be without those acquisitions of Nigel Slade and Barmanis. Those two gentlemen have been hard working parts of this Danville Dashers team, whether it's at full strength or right here on the penalty kill. <laughs> Dashers doing a good job here, 55 seconds left on the serve pro penalty kill and a man down on the ice, slow to get up from Port Huron. I think it's more because he's tied up there with the puck underneath his foot than anything. He's up now, all oh, fighting for it, and he comes away with it. It's Federley on that side. Young back to Federley. He bobbles that one a little bit. Behind net, Port Huron still in control here. Palmerville almost gets a stick on that one. Instead, cannot clear the zone, Danville. 7.44 left in the game, 24 seconds left to go on the penalty kill. That one redirected by Danville. In there now, finally got someone, Troy Murray in there, defending Jesse Gordachuk from screens. He's had a tough going with that so far tonight, done admirably not to let one in. Not a great pass there on the change up and not gonna hurt anyone as Jay comes on. Graham carrying it through. Graham with a shot off the post of Danville. Jesse Gordachuk unable to get to that one. A little bit of a fluttering knuckleball of a shot. Goaltender's best friend came into play that time. You got that right. Danville able to recover now and get a shift change as the penalty expires and back out onto the ice. Now we're back to even numbers. It's a huge kill for the Danville Dashers. Now they got to get something going on the offensive end. Got to turn that dirty into right. You get caught on the wrong side of a call and you let your momentum slip, you could be in the hole. But nonetheless, we're going here. Port Huron carrying it over, threatening. A shot goes top shelf of Gordachuk and up and back over the net. Dasher's gonna have the momentum here. Fred Hine, Fred Hine carries it in. Hine with a sweep, almost throws a backhanded wrister into the net, just a little bit high. He's still fighting for the puck though against Graham. And we're gonna have an offside here. Working hard at both ends tonight and also working hard at uh, getting the physical part of this game going as well. Yeah, we just saw Graham slide backwards on his skates and put Hine into the boards there. I don't think those two are gonna go out for a beer after the game. I don't think so. I definitely don't think so. If they do, they might make the headlines in the Danville News with a little bar fight afterwards too. Yeah, no kidding. You get enough of those in Danville. Oh, a nice stretch pass there by Troy Murray. It's gonna find the Dashers some ice on the offensive side, a not good pass there. It's gonna end up with Port Huron throwing it back to Logan Hoggood. Active stick by Port Huron, just kinda of tipped that one away. That one is tipped up there, not gonna be an icing, as picked up by Stoya. Oh, gave it up to the Dashers behind his own net. Slade gives it right back, however, as Port Huron able to recover and dump it all the way down the ice. That'll be an icing. Yep, that's gonna come all the way back as it's touched up there by Logan Hoggood. 5.56 left in regulation. And this one's getting a little nerve wracking, Nate. Imagine being down there on the ice, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> on to it now. A face-off in Danville's offensive zone. Shot from the point isn't getting as far as the net there before it's stopped by Port Huron. Coming back, Palmerville. Portillo with a shot that's Ooh. chicked away by Gordichuk. Portillo had a few great offensive opportunities so far tonight. Danville doing everything they can to clear it. It's gonna end up with Levi Armstrong who fires it back to the defense. That one is pucked all the way up as it's gonna come back, take a weird bounce. Tessarero almost able to pounce on it. Instead, Luciani Good had a shot at it. Armstrong to Luciani. Oh, back to Slade. Oh, Tessarero almost had a chance at it. Instead, Jay coming. Palmerville on Jay. Jay doing a nice job of getting that puck out as he had virtually no passing options. A shot, a wrist rocket from the point there. 
stop by Gordachuk and Danville's on the break. It's Tesserero put hard into the boards. Didn't quite get all of AJ, thank goodness. Yeah, that would have been a crushing blow if he did. Hine flips that one down, gonna lay chase to it as Jesse Nair. That one is a rocket and a nice pass off the boards there. Sees Port here on almost end up with the puck. Instead, it's gonna be picked up by Gordachuk and frozen. 4.46 left. Fantastic job on the carom there to go all the way down the ice and right into the glove of Gordachuk. Two to two here in the third, 4.46 left on the clock. Whatever team pulls away with this one in the end, they've worked for it and earned it, that's for sure. This has been a back and forth game, lots of open spaces, lots of chances. Danville gonna have a chance of their own here now, carrying it over are the Dashers. A huge hit there, a player on the ground, and that one's gonna come back for a penalty. Taking yeah. the worst of that one was Bormanis. He is yet to get up. Got the elbows up, and that is gonna cost him two minutes in the box. Bormanis already on the ground. Hit He's very hard there. Yeah, he, it was a very dangerous move because Bormanis was already sort of off balance along the boards when they got the hit going, and then the Port Huron player coming up with the elbow hard into the side of the face of Bormanis, leaving him a little shaken up, but he's staying out on the ice. He's not out there, no blood drawn, so he's good to stay out, and that's good for the Dashers. He's been electric tonight, very, very active with the stick. He's actually gonna come in for a change now, but originally, he looked like he was gonna stay out there. And David Nippar, the forward for Port Huron, tried to plead his case, but usually that doesn't work. And as they say, the ice hockey rink is not a courtroom. You don't get to be a defendant. <laughs> it's not Both sides try it all the time, let me tell you. Not a democracy around here. The no. guy with the red stripes is the boss. I will always say democracy is a good thing, except when it comes to sports. Palmerville with the ball on the point now. Fred Hunt! Goal! Fred Hine with the hat trick! Oh, what a play! What a goal, Fred Hine! Unbelievable job by your Danville Dashers to take the lead! Fred Hine having a fantastic night and a fantastic season! What a goal, Fred Hine! Take a bow, sir! Wow! And Nippert looks a little bit more upset about that penalty than he did going into the box. He's gonna stay out in the right wing position. Port here on four minutes and 30 seconds left, down by one. Plenty of time left to pull back within reach. We've already seen him do it once. Graham loses the face off there. Picking it up are the Dashers. Palmerville has it down in the bottom. A big hit there laid along the boards. Nice clean hit. We've seen a lot of those tonight. A very physical game, a very well played game by both sides. Oh, and heck of a defensive play there to stall the point here on offense. That was Seth Ensor getting down on the ground to stop a offensive opportunity there for Matt Stoya. And a great play by Gordachuk not to give up a, uh, a rebound there. The Dasher's a little upset that uh, the Port Huron players got a little bit active with the sticks in the face and around the body of their goaltender. It's been a hard fought game by both teams tonight. And the Dashers are gonna win that face off, laying chase for it was Nick Gullo. Gordachuk able to throw that one out. And coming back now, number 77, Barakov, kind of shading back into a defensive position. A big bodied physical guy, who normally plays forward, but does slide back every once in a while into a defensive spot, just for a little bit of help, especially when you're up by one. 340 left in regulation. Fred Hine looking for a fourth there, trying to poke that one away from Stoya. Stoya dumps it down though, it's going behind the goal of Gordachuk. Fred Hine not only great with the shots tonight, but also very active playing on both ends of the rink. Great defender tonight as well. 
Hoagland throws that one down the net. Port Huron going to have some time to regroup and recover. Oh, that one's going to be picked up there almost by Federley. Federley made a heck of a run at that one, trying to get on the long stretch pass. Brad Denny working hard to keep that puck. Brad Denny, Johan Hoagland, been a great pairing tonight for the Dashers. Federley on the end of this one in the corner. Federley throws it across to the point, back to Strack, who shoots, and it's blocked nicely by Fred Hine, working on all levels. Rebound almost thrown in there instead. Oh, off the post of Jesse Gordachuk. That's two tonight. Man, he better kiss that post before the end of the game tonight, that's for sure. A big hit there from Johan Hoagland. Fred Hine gonna look to get a hold of this one and send it down for a stretch pass, it does. Dashers need to get this puck out, they got tired legs. Hoagland with a shot from the point, doesn't make it very far, but does the trick. We were about to see a fight here, that was broken up by the referees. Going after him was Bormanis. Seems about right. <laughs> By the end of this one, we might have both benches cleared the way this is going. That one's thrown down the length of the ice. Gonna be touched up by Gordachuk. Gordachuk, oh, dangerous thought. Play. That was a dangerous decision there. Dashers fans probably living in a state of fear after watching Matt Kalutis come well too far out of the net all last year. We're under two minutes. A pace shot is redirected off of Gordachuk into the net. Gordachuk takes a deep breath on that one. Finally time to collect himself after letting two go off the post. Oof. Referee's doing a good job of giving a little talking to, to both sides during this stoppage in play. I don't think they're too happy with some of the shenanigans that have been going on behind the play, getting that little extra shot in. It's definitely been chippy since about the late stages of the second period. Now 1.51 left to go here in the third period. 3-2, to two, Danville up on Port Huron. Face-off won by the Big Dashers. face-off win there for your Dashers. Collecting it, Seth Ensor. Ensor almost turns it over, saved by the foot of the on-ice official. Ensor pushes it out there to Jesse Nair. Nair throws it down, trying to find Nick Gullo. Speedster almost gets it back. Instead, it comes to Nair. Nair pushed from behind into the boards there. Ooh. Nothing dirty about that one. Coming down now, Jay. Jay's got it. He's going to wrap around, have an opportunity here. It's swell swept up there by Alex Palmerville and Jesse Gordachuk. A big hit laid there. We're down to 119 left. Laying that hit. Jesse Nair has had a great active night tonight. Do believe that was on Jay. Have to take a look at the official recovery there. Gordachuk sent sprawling on He's the ground. Down. They're going to have to call this one down as yeah. that was a big hit from Jonathan Giuliano that knocks the mask off of Gordachuk. Yeah, a little, little bit again behind the scenes if that wasn't needed by Port Huron. I'll be surprised if he doesn't go to the box for that one. But the Dashers did a good job of protecting their goalie. And Fred Hines pleading the case of why that isn't going to be a penalty. Giuliano making his way back to the bench, not the box. As Gordachuk's got to recollect himself and fast. You got another minute and six seconds left to get into this game and a dynamic Port Huron def or offense. It's already got two goals on you and could have as many as four if the post weren't a great friend for you. But as they say, that's just how it goes. Well, his job is to protect the area between the pipes. Yeah. He's doing a good job of that, but he's getting a couple of good bounces off the post you to know, keep this one in Danville's favor. When they translate the word luck from the original English, it actually just means great spatial awareness. It's all about the spatial awareness. There's been a couple of bouncing pucks too, where if it hadn't been on edge, he'd been in trouble too. And before we get to the last minute of this game, let me just tell you, what a game by both sides. Great this, play. This has been great hockey, good physical, hard fought hockey from start to finish. Stoya on the point now. Stoya with a shot that almost finds Gordachuk. It's bounced off of his chest protector. One Brad minute. Denny clears this one. It's gonna be tried to push out was Christers Bormanis. A lot going on here. Goaltender off, extra skate around for Port Huron. Robertson on the point, and a shot from the point is blocked by Gordachuk. They gotta get this out. Robertson on it now. Dashers trying to recover this and send it down the ice in any way they can. 36 seconds left to go here. Port Huron has a solid possession right now. Robertson awaiting a pass instead, it goes the other way. 
Good job by Bormanis. David Nippert out there as well. Also Stoya in the back. Bormanis really active with his stick. That's exactly why Ray Tremblay has him out there. 20 the seconds. Almost thrown on net there by Port Huron instead. It's coming to the point, a shot goes high of the net. 13 seconds. Bormanis almost shoots this one out. Instead it's caught up there, Bormanis not able to get on the other end of it. It's shot back into play, shot down the rink. It's gonna go wide right. It's not gonna be an icing. And the Dashers win! What an incredible, incredible victory! After losing to Port Huron at Port Huron for nothing last night, the Danville Dashers come out here and play their best game of the season. All season long, Nate, we've had these little lulls of two or three minutes where the Dashers have left the club get back in a game. That was not the case tonight. We saw good hard play by the Dashers from start to finish. And also worth noting, one of the first games here at the David S. Palmer Arena where the Dashers were outshot 37 to 35 and still managed to walk away with the win. Jesse Gordachuk might just find himself as one of the stars of tonight's game, letting in two goals against the Port Huron offense. Man, they can stick it, let me tell you. A great crowd here tonight as well, worth mentioning. We know who the number one star is gonna be tonight though. And not only did he put the goals in the net tonight, he worked so hard, especially on the penalty kills and doing a great job. Fred Hine had the best game I've seen of any Dashers player tonight all season. He was just dynamite. That was definitely one of the better game and performances I've seen but all the other ones I've seen in the last two years were from Fred Hines, so not too surprising. Maybe other than uh, Ryan Marker, who is now on Delaware, another really talented player on the Dashers last season. But Fred Hine, the focus of the game tonight, as much as he was roughed up and even face guarded at some times, they were game plan for Fred Hine, and he still found a way to get into the net three times. He has an amazing knack for finding the open ice. And then it seems like when he has that chance to get the open ice, he finds the puck. And when he has a chance with, uh, with nobody out in front of that net, Fred Hine is a, is a master at finding the holes in the goaltender for the opposing team. Just dynamite shots all night long. There was not a single one of those goals were a lucky goal. He buried all of them. That's true, the puck just seems to jump off of the stick of Fred Hine, to say the least. As we get word on the stars of the game tonight. Palmerville, solid defensively all night. And Matt Robertson was the third star from Port Huron. Two goals on the night, two points. Palmerville with two assists on the night, and of course, as you well expected, Mr. Fred Hine, the big number one nine, with three goals on the night. The first star, the go-ahead goal, three different go-ahead goals, and a great night from Fred Hine, a great night from Alex Palmerville, a great night from Jesse Gordachuk, a great hustle night from the Dashers that look a completely different team coming from what we've seen in the past couple of games, including that shutout loss last night. Yeah, Coach Ray Tremblay was very upset with his crew from last night. They just didn't put in the effort that he's expecting to see. He certainly got the effort from them tonight from start to finish. I was very, very impressed with the hustle of the Danville Dashers. And did you notice that each one of Fred Hines' goals tonight came after a tough hit against him? He got even with the stick scoring those goals. I don't think it's a good strategy to get Fred Hine upset. No, unless you're the Danville Dashers, you might want to start throwing something in his locker, make him <laughs> mad before the game, see what he can get out there and do. I'm going to start telling Fred that the other players said something nasty <laughs> to him <laughs> when I see him before the game. I, anything, you know, anything it takes to get another win out of these Danville Dashers, but my goodness, this club is really coming together. That Port Huron club is tough. They've got a lot of guys that have played together for a while, and they've got talent up and down that roster. But the Danville Dashers just outplayed them tonight and worked really hard for this victory. A lot of great scorers on that Port Huron team. 
And now a lot of offensive potential here with the Dashers, a lot of new incomers, and even down a couple of guys. Let's talk about adversity and powering through that adversity. That's going to be one of the bigger focuses of the next little stretch of the season heading into December, where we know it can be kind of a grueling task. You play a lot of games, especially during the holiday season, and down a couple of guys. You come out short-staffed, tired-legged from a long trip last night and pull away a close win. What was really impressive to me is some of the guys that didn't hit the scoreboard necessarily uh, really had strong games. A.J. Tessararo, some of the hustle plays that he had, he drew two penalties by plays he made in the center ice to, to get an advantage that led to penalties that led to goals. And absolutely, as a veteran, you really need a performance like that from him. You've got a team full of young or fresh faces coming in and tired legs. You're getting to that point, middle point of the season, early middle point of the season, granted, where your legs can get pretty tired. And man, these are world-class athletes out here and we're seeing a perfect example of that tonight. And guys like Nigel Slade working so hard against the boards fighting for that puck in the defensive end and getting that puck out was the key because there were times when it looked like Port Huron had the momentum, but my goodness, good performance by Jesse Gordachuk and a great performance by his best friend, the right and left post. Yeah, no kidding. A tight squeeze there. Luck just translates to spatial awareness. If you've taken anything from this broadcast, let it be that. Well, I guess that's about going to do it for us here tonight. We'll be back. I actually don't know exactly when we'll be back. We'll be next back eventually weekend. here next weekend. Yeah, nice and soon. We cannot wait for that. The Dashers will be taking on the Menor Icebreakers here at the David S. Palmer Arena. That'll be at 7.05 Central Time, 8.05 for you fans out there on the East Coast. Your other time zones, I can't do that math in my head, so you'll just have to figure it out yourself. A 3-2 victory here for the Danville Dashery Dashers behind Fred Hines' impressive hat trick and a stellar performance from, well, the whole team. A great night tonight. A lot of hard hustle won points as we see Port Huron take the loss 3-2 to two as the Danville Dashers come out on top. Well, for Dennis Michelson, I'm Nate Williamson here on the Danville Dashers Broadcast Network. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next weekend.